morning. Sorry, I'm getting in here late. I don't have my watch on. I left my watch charger in Columbus this weekend, and uh, so I'm having to use my my phone, and hopefully it's silenced. <laughs> we'll know here in a little while, won't we? It is. Let's stand. To the Lord in prayer, God, we thank you as we gather in the name of Jesus. God, we come together today and we worship your name. Lord, we love you, Jesus. We love you, Jesus. Thank you, God. Oh, God, thank you for choosing us. Thank you, God, for filling us with your spirit, for washing our sins away. God, we give you the praise today for you alone are worthy. God, there's nobody like you, Jesus. God, fill this place today, I pray, with your presence. Let your anointing and your power be upon us, O God, as we seek the face of the Lord. Draw us nearer to you, O God. And Lord, you work in our life, O Lord, as we seek your face. Open our hearts to your word today that you may impart something to us. That God, you may instruct us in the ways of God. Let us hear the word of the Lord today to receive it in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. God, we give you all the glory and the praise. We worship you. Why don't you lift your hands to the Lord for a moment and let's exalt the Lord. God, we magnify your name. We praise your holy name, O oh God. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Blessed be the name of the Lord. How great is our God. How great is our God. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Blessed be your mighty name. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. You may be seated. There was a man, he was quite wealthy man, and uh, he had been single most of his life, but found a young lady and uh, was falling in love with her. And he wanted to make sure, because of his wealth, and he, he was quite wealthy, he wanted to make sure that she, uh, her interest in him uh, was more than his money. Uh, he wanted to make sure that she truly uh, loved him, that she was a person of character, and, and so she, uh, he, he uh, wanted to hire a detective to kind of check into her, make sure that she was okay, and, and, but he didn't want her to know, and he, he didn't want her to, it to get back to him, and so he decided, and, and he was so wealthy that he had an assistant, and he was so wealthy that his assistants had assistants, so he uh, asked them, he said, have one of your assistants uh, hire this detective. Don't use my name. Don't say anything about me. Just ha have them hire this detective and have them uh, look into her and make sure that uh, everything's on the up and up. And he thought it was, but, but he wanted to be sure. And so uh, the detective began to do his detecting and was, would follow her and watch her and take his notes. And finally, the day came that he would turn his report in. So he f calls the uh, assistant's assistant up and said, I have the report on what you wanted me to do. And so uh, he sent the report in. The report went to the other assistant and finally to the man that was very wealthy. And they gave him the report. And he was reading through the report. And the report was a glowing recommendation of this young lady. Yeah, absolutely glowing, just talking about her. And she was just a wonderful person, and there was no, no flaws that they could find in any of her background or anything like that. They said, there's only one thing, just one thing I need to make note of, that she has been seen in the company of a wealthy man, and he is very unscrupulous. And he, he is a man of dubious character. And, and, and so uh, we would recommend that, that she, that she not, not uh, interact with this guy because interacting with him would ruin her reputation. What he thought he was going to find out, what he thought was going to be something that uh, was checking on her, ended up being a check on him. And that's really what I want to talk to you about today. I, I want to talk to you about character. Character matters. Your character matters. Let, let, me, let me even say this. Godly character 
matters. A man was interviewing a young boy for his, for his work uh, it, to hire him at his store. And he asked the young man, he said, will you be honest and will you be truthful if I hire you? And the young man said, I will be honest and I will be truthful even if you don't hire me. Character. Character matters. I want us to go to, uh, there are several scriptures I want to open with today, starting with Proverbs, 25th chapter of the book of Proverbs, and going to the 28th verse, 25th book of Pro, or 25th chapter, not the 25th book, 25th chapter of the book of Proverbs, and the 28th verse. You can always find great wisdom in the book of Proverbs. He that hath no rule over his own spirit is like a city that is broken down and without walls. He that has no control over his own character. Person who has no control over their own behavior. Daniel chapter 1. Daniel chapter 1 and verse 8, the Bible speaks of the young man Daniel. It says, but Daniel purposed in his heart that he would not defile himself with the portion of the king's meat, nor with the wine which he drank. Therefore, he requested of the prince of the eunuchs that he might not defile himself. Skip on over, stay in the book of Daniel, Daniel chapter 6, and verse 3. Then this Daniel was preferred above all the presidents and princes because an excellent spirit was in him, and the king thought to set him over the whole realm. Verse 11, same chapter. Then these men assembled and found Daniel praying and making supplication before his God. Then they came near and spake before the king concerning the king's decree. Hast thou not signed a decree that every man that shall ask a petition of any god or man within 30 days, save of thee, O king, shall be cast into the den of lions? The king answered and said, The thing is true, according to the law of the Medes and Persians, which, which altereth not. One more scripture, Genesis chapter 41. Genesis chapter 41, verse 38. Verse 38, the Bible says, And Pharaoh said unto his servant, Can we find such a one as this is, a man in whom the Spirit of God is, and Pharaoh said unto Joseph, For as much as God hath showed thee all this, there is no, none so discreet and wise as thou art. Thou shalt be over my house according unto thy word, and shall all my people be ruled only in the throne. Will I be greater than thou? A person that has a right spirit. Isn't it, isn't it a whole lot better to be around a person who has good character than someone without good character? Isn't it more pleasant to be around somebody whose spirit is right than somebody whose spirit is all messed up and crossed? A person who has a right spirit or who has good character, that person, I can point to that person, I can tell you, that person is going to be blessed. A person who, who doesn't have good character, a person who doesn't have control over their own spirit, who, who uh, is not able to discipline their own character, they are going to have problems in every aspect of their life. Every area of their life, they're going to have issues and problems because 
Character is not limited to one, one area of your life, but character affects everything about who you are. It affects everything about who you are, how you treat people. How, matter of fact, how people, people treat you. Character affects that. I, I, I don't care how big a person's bank account is. I don't care how well they dress. I, I, I don't care how, how well they're known in society or, or how even successful somebody deems them to be. The most important characteristic about a person is their character. It's their spirit, their attitude. It, it's, it's who they are. It, it's who they are when they're in public, but quite honestly, it's who they are when they're alone. It, it, it's who they are when, when they're, they're with just their wife, and it's who they are when they're at church or with their friends. Character is going to determine... <coughs> And if a person is wealthy and a person is attractive and a person dresses well and a person ha has all kinds of things going their way and has a bad attitude or a bad uh, character flaw or, or, or a bad spirit, all of that other loses its appeal. Loses its appeal. young man uh, of good character was looking to date and... He decided there was a young girl at college. She was an uh, attractive young lady, carried herself well. And, and so he, he went up to her and he introduced himself to her uh, as properly as he could. And he uh, just trying to get to know her. And she was dressed nice. She looked good, turned around. And the first words out of her mouth was, what's up, dog? Changed everything. Changed everything. He was no longer interested in this girl. He did everything that had appealed to him lost its appeal because of character. Because of, of who she was. And, and when you have a right spirit and you keep a good attitude and you develop a good character, people are impressed with you. They're, they're, they're impressed with you. And folks, what the area of your life you need to guard is your own personal spirit. The area of your life you are responsible for is your own personal spirit. Keeping the right attitude. Solomon wrote in Proverbs chapter 16, verse 32, that he that is slow to anger... Hmm. He that is slow to anger is better than the mighty. That man that is, has control over his temper is stronger than the strongest warrior. That person that has control over their behavior Over what they say. Over how they say it. Has more strength of character. Than a person that's been trained in the military. And can carry out tremendous feats of, of strength and, and agility and, and so forth. They have more strength in their character. A person that can control their anger. He that ruleth his spirit than he that taketh a city. He said, he said the person that can rule his own character, his own spirit is, is stronger than a person who can overcome a city. That can, that, can, that can take a city. During Solomon's day cities were known for their strong fortification. The walls that surrounded them that protect them. And Solomon was basically saying that a man that rules his spirit, that person who can control himself. Everybody say control himself. Because isn't that what character is? 
It's, it's the ability to control our responses. It's the ability to make the right choices when confronted with the, the opportunity to make either a right or a wrong choice. And we all have that opportunity every single day. And whether a person is of good character or bad character is going to determine and weigh in on how that decision is made and which path is taken. And Solomon, Solomon is saying he that rules his spirit, a person who can control himself, is better than a general that can overcome the fortress and the walls of a city and overtake that city. Put Proverbs 25, 28 back up there. He that hath no rule over his own spirit is like a city that is broken down without walls, without good character, without self-control, without personal discipline. Literally, he is saying, we have no protection. We're like a city without walls. We have no protection. There's nothing that, that protects us from making the wrong decision. There's nothing that protects us and keeps us. Folks, a person that cannot control his own spirit, or, or we might say has a person that doesn't have good character, is like a city that is literally defenseless. You ever seen... A boxer, my dad was a, a big fan of, of boxing. I wasn't, he was. And he, he, he liked to watch boxing match, matches and so forth. And um, There were some times my dad would say about a boxer, he said, he said his weakness is he can't defend himself. He can't defend himself. What good is a boxer that can't defend himself? What, what good is, is a battleship that has all the guns with no ammunition? It's a sitting duck. It's defenseless. And if we do not develop good character, if we do not develop a strong character, then we are literally defenseless against the wiles of the enemy. We're defenseless against those things that would come against us. And when we have a weakness in our character, often God uses temptation to show us the weaknesses that we have. Trials will reveal the weaknesses that we have in our character. When I was a kid, my mom would buy orange juice at the store. We always, shopping day was Friday, grocery store. We went to Acme, we went to AMP, and we went to, uh, well, there was a third one. Acme, AMP, and IGA. Those three stores. And my mom had sales papers in each one, and she would circle the, what she was going to buy at each store. And, and we, we hit all three stores on Friday. It was a big day. But I love juice, still love juice. And my mom would buy juice and she'd bring it home. And I would immediately want some juice when we got home. And you get a hold of that cold thing of juice, and turn it up, and nothing come out. Well, the main reason was it had to, the top had to be broken for it to come out. My mom would buy, anybody buy concentrate still? You'll buy concentrate. I, I think that's a that that's not as popular as it used to be. I think most people just buy the top of can of big, big uh, things, and and the biggest decision now you got to make: do I want pulp or no pulp? But she would buy concentrate, and and of course concentrate you've got to you have to break the top uh, to 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 get it out. You know, sometimes God has to break break some things on us. Sometimes God has to break some things to develop the character 
that, that is in us, that, that God, the godly character that, that we need to have within us. And, and so, so we, my mom would do that, and she would, she would break, the, break the top, and, and then she'd open it, and she'd mix it up. And You know, when you mix up concentrate, that goes a long way. Concentrate goes a long way. I almost convinced myself after writing this message, I need to go back to concentrate. But there were things that has to be added to concentrate. To, 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 for it to, I mean, you just don't take what's in there. I think that would be kind of, I've never tasted just what's in there, but I would think that would be kind of, uh, really strong. And, and then you've got to add water or whatever uh, to it and, and, and make it into what, what it is supposed to be so, so that you can drink it. And sometimes God has to break some things in our lives to add things to us so that we can develop that character, godly character, to be like Jesus. On earth I long to be like him. All through life's journey, from earth to glory, I only ask to be like him. And, and, and that's what we strive for, isn't it? Isn't that what our goal is as Christians? Christ, Christian meaning Christ-like is to strive to be like Jesus, to develop that kind of character and that strength of character. Sometimes some things have to be broken. Sometimes some things have to be added to us. Sometimes things have to be taken away from us. We have to empty ourselves of things. So that we can be, have the character that, that we want to see in our lives. And, and we need to take, as individuals, every effort. Every effort to strengthen those weak areas of our life. Because trust me, the devil's going to find out what weak area you have. He is going to test you. He's going to test you till, till he finds your Achilles wheel. Wheel, heel. Or will. Anybody think of somebody in scripture had a flaw in their character? Right, right there. First guy that comes to mind, Jacob. But pretty much everybody, didn't they? Had a flaw in their character. But Samson was the first one that came to my mind. Samson immediately uh, came to me. Pos Possibly one of the most exciting stories in Scripture and one of the most disastrous stories in Scripture. Samson, who had so much potential, a man, he was called of God. His, his calling with, was without doubt. I mean, when the angel appears to, to your dad and tells your dad, and... and and, and that calling is confirmed over and over. There, there's no doubt that, that Samson had a call of God on his life. He, he was to be a judge and fill the place of a judge in Israel during that time. And he had a tremendous ability. He was anointed of God, anointed with the power of God, anointed with strength in his life. There was an anointing that was upon him. Folks, you can be anointed and have weakness in your life. You can be powerful in the spirit and still have weakness. You've got to guard your character. You have to guard who you are, your character. You have to guard yourself. You have to make sure that, that you're able to control. Samson, Samson had areas of his life he had a hard time controlling. He, 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 he was very difficult. And folks, character... Character, we bear a lot of responsibility to our own character. We, 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 we bear that. Anointing doesn't give you character. Anointing gives you power. Anointing gives you strength, but it doesn't give you character. You ever heard the saying, uh, a leopard or a lion, what, a leopard can't change his spots? Is that right? A leopard can't change his spots? I've seen people who have come and received the Holy Ghost, had a tremendous experience with God. The Lord touched them mightily. 
but they had never allowed God to develop their character. They never allowed God to help them to shape their character. And, and the thing that concerns me so much and almost scares me about Samson is Samson seemed to treat his calling, his anointing, with, with almost a disregard. He seemed to treat his experience with God as, 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 as I don't know, what's the word, casual? Would that, would that be a good word? Casualness? What? Nonchalant, casual? Yeah. Uh, yeah, kind of just, yeah, I've got it, so it's okay. I've got it, so it's always going to be here. I've got this experience with God. And, and I've seen people like that. Who, who their, their experience with God is treated so casually without, without disregard to the price that was paid for it, without disregard to, to, to the uh, blessing that it is in their life. And they treat it with such, such a, a, a just kind of casual, I guess, casualness that, they, that they don't, they're not concerned about it. Let me tell you something. I, I, I'm glad I'm saved. I'm thankful God saved me, but I don't want to lose my salvation. I don't want to lose what God has given me. And it's possible. that it, It's not that God ever leaves us. God doesn't leave us. It's that we stray. And it's that we allow ourselves to get farther and farther away from God and and. This is not in my notes at all. I, 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 this is not what I come up here to talk about today. It has a lot to do with character. But that, that, that's what happens. And we allow ourselves to get casual, nonchalant. We, we allow ourselves ju just to not guard what God has, has given us. And we allow that character in Samson. And, and that scares me that we can allow that to happen. That, that, matter of fact, that ought to scare all of us. That should scare every one of us. That we can, uh, it, it's so easy to allow that to happen. I mean, Samson was going from victory to victory. I mean, when the time arose, he could, he could fight the Philistines. He could, he could set their fields on fire. Samson could tear the gates off. He, when, when the time arose, he could do all of that. While living with a weak character. You know, some people think, well, God hasn't done anything to me, so it must be okay. It's not okay. It's not okay. God gives us a long space of repentance. He gives us opportunity after opportunity after opportunity of repentance. And if we choose not to repent, then we allow ourselves to get farther and farther away from God. And Samson got to the place, and without going through all of the details of the story, and, and most of us here know the details of Samson. We've heard it since Sunday school. We know the details, but it got to the place where Samson revealed the secret of his strength to Delilah. And she would, she would cut the locks and Lots of his hair, and, and we, we know the story. He, he woke up, and he didn't even realize. He wished not, the Bible says. How scary is that? To have lost out with God and not even know it. To have, to have allowed his relationship with God to get so cold, to allow his weakness of character. To allow him to get so, so cold with God, so unconcerned with God that he did not guard what God had given him and his character. And it allowed him to become, it allowed him to lose out with God. It robbed him of his spirit, of his spiritual blessings. It robbed him of his physical strength. And, and think about this. 
Samson had so much going for him. Samson ha had it all right. He was brought up by godly parents. Sam Samson wa was set apart by God for kingdom service. He, he, he was dedicated to God. He had all of this going right for him. He had victories that he could testify of that God had given him. But Samson's strength, Samson's experience with God lasted only as long as his obedience to the principles of for him, the Nazarite principles that he had been called to keep. And it was his weakness of character. It was his weakness of character. That Samson would lose all of that. He, 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 he would lose all of that. Folks, it's the same way with me and you. It's, it, it's the same way with us. When we develop our character and we keep our spirit, and we develop our character and we keep our spirit and, and we walk in the principles, these principles, the principles of this book, and we keep the principles. And I, I think I said it Wednesday night or last Sunday or something. I, this is not a buffet. This is not a pick and choose. This, this, this is not, I like this one, I don't like that one. This is keep the principles of this book. When we do that, we're blessed. Put Psalm chapter 1 up there. When, when, when we do that, we're blessed. Blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly. It's who you surround yourself with. You got to watch who you surround yourself with. Who was Samson hanging out with? He, he wasn't hang, hanging out with the local youth group. He, he, he wasn't hanging out with, with, with the church folk. Blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor standeth in the way of sinners, nor sitteth in the seat of the scornful. But his the light is in the law of the Lord, and in his law doth he meditate day and night. And he shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water that bringeth forth his fruit in his season. His leaves shall not wither, and whatsoever he doeth shall prosper. That man, that man that is blessed, that man that, that receives, and I, and I use the man just speaking of the people of God. The, the, those that, that walk not in the counsel of God or stand in the way of sinners or sinners in the seat of the scornful. Those that choose to do that, they are blessed. God has pronounced a blessing on them. And when, when Samson no longer kept the Nazarite vows that separated him, he, he broke those. And what he broke those, and the next thing you know about Samson is he is in spiritual ruin. His relationship has decayed with God so much that now he's in spiritual ruin. Folks, the most important thing you can do is develop and guard your character. And I'm not just talking about how you look and how you live at church. You can dress up. You can put on, put on church clothes. You can come to church and you can act the part. You can, you can do all of that and still be living in weakness of character. Now, none of us are perfect. We've all got weaknesses. We all have things we have to guard. Everybody does. I'm not preaching that you shouldn't have a weakness. I'm preaching you got to guard it. If you've got a weakness, you do not put yourself in a position or a situation that makes it easy for you. How many know the devil can always give you an excuse? You can always, and sometimes it's not the devil, sometimes it's you. 
Sometimes you find it, uh, uh, an excuse to defend your weakness of character. You, 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 sometimes you are not dealing with guarding your character and guarding who you are. Someone, someone should not have to ask you. Someone should not have to get up close and personal with you to, to figure out whether you're a Christian or not. Somebody ought to be able to see you from afar off and know, I know how they live. They should not have to try to figure out and look behind this action or that action to drive you. Well, well, they go to church, I guess. I guess. That should not be so. Your character should speak for itself. Your character should say, I'm a, I'm a follower, I'm a disciple, I live in obedience to God. I, I, I'm not, I, you don't have to try to question me to figure out if I'm a Christian. My behavior speaks for me. My lifestyle speaks for me. Your character should speak for you. The final scene of Samson's life is Samson blinded, pushing a wheel in the press for the Philistine, for the enemy. The final scene of this man that was so anointed, so powerful in the spirit. See, there is a cost to not guarding your spirit. You can allow bitterness to come in. There's a cost. You can allow rebellion to come in. There's a cost. You can allow discontentment to come in. There's a cost. There is always a cost to not guarding your character. And folks, if we're going to have good character, we got to have a good foundation. We've, we've got to be able to build upon a good foundation. We have to build on a foundation that makes sure that we do what's right, think what's right, stay right, and continue in the right direction. We have to know what's right, even, even when we desire to do wrong. Even when we desire to do what's wrong, we've got to have enough character that says, no, I am not going to allow myself to go there. I am not going to allow myself to do that. I am not going to allow myself to think that. I am not going to allow. Let me tell you something. It's easy to live the life of a sinner. I know what it's like to live the life of a sinner. You can do anything as a sinner, but it takes somebody with backbone. It takes somebody with grit to live for God. It takes somebody with strength of character to live for God. Anybody can be a sinner. you got to have some backbone to crucify the flesh. To say with Paul, I die daily. you got, you got to have some backbone of your spirit. And when you, when you look for in the scripture, who can think of somebody in scripture that had good character? My mind went right to one place immediately. Joseph, Esther. Who else had good character? Of course, Jesus. Yeah. Okay. Well, you can't top that. But who else? Who? Job. Abraham? Boy, none of you. My mind went one place. Nobody else? Deborah? How about Daniel? How many are there? That's David with Goliath. David, David had some character flaws. But my mind went to Daniel. 
I mean, it was straight to Daniel when, when I was trying to think of somebody that had good character. Daniel chapter 5, verse 12. The Bible says, for as much as an excellent spirit, excellent character, and knowledge and understanding, interpreting of dreams, showing of hard sentences, and dissolving of doubts. i got to study that dissolving of doubts thing. I, I really want to understand that. Found in the same Daniel, all of that. All of that I just listed, found in the same Daniel, whom the king named Belshazzar. Now let Daniel be called, and he will show the interpretation. Daniel was a man of tremendous character. What a man of character. He was a man of tremendous character. And Daniel, Daniel was a man that followed closely after God. He sought after the Lord. And, he, and because of that, Daniel gained the respect. Let me tell you something. It's not, only, it's not only God that takes notice of your character. It's people you work with that take notice of your character. It's people that you interact with, other family members. They notice what kind of character you have. My, my pastor used to say, let me take one hour, road, one hour road trip with somebody and I can tell you what kind of character they are by the end of it. Out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaketh. Character. Daniel commanded the respect of others because he maintained his spiritual character. Daniel 1.8, we read it earlier. But Daniel purposed in his heart that he would not defile himself with a portion of the king's meat nor with the wine which he drank. Therefore, he respected, he requested of the prince of the eunuchs that he might not defile himself. Now, you got to think. Now, think about how strong Daniel's character was. Daniel was a very young man when he was taken into captivity. Daniel was taken out of all of the spiritual influence that surrounded him. He was removed. He, Daniel when, when didn't have a pastor when he was in um, captivity. Daniel did, was, didn't have a youth group. Three Hebrew boys that were there, but did, really didn't have a youth group. Daniel wasn't surrounded by other saints of God. Daniel wasn't in church on Sundays. Daniel did not have all of that to, to insulate him. And, and quite honestly, this is an insulation here. And, and he did not have all of that to insulate himself. He was separated from all of his spiritual influences. And, 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 and one of the things that, that I love about Daniel is that Daniel is a shining example of how young people can live for God. How young people can live for God. Even surrounded by ungodly influences. Even surrounded by idolatry and all kinds of immorality. They can live for God. Do you know how easy it would have been for Daniel to blend in? How easy it would have been for Daniel to let go of convictions, his convictions, and, and allow himself to just kind of let his beliefs kind of go and call it survival. Call it just, well, I want to have friends. Daniel's character was more important to him than his friends. His strength of character was more important to him than, than just being surrounded by people that accepted him. And he had, to, he had to compromise everything he knew, everything he believed. He had to compromise truth to be able to fit in with that group. But he said, that, that's, that's not my character. I purpose in my heart not to defile myself. And for that reason, he did not let things slip away. He did not compromise his moralities. He did not compromise morals. He did not compromise his, his convictions. He did, <coughs> excuse me, he did not compromise his prayer life. There was something in the life of Daniel 
in his character, in who Daniel was, his deep experience with God, his convictions were so deep-rooted that he, it even came down to what he would and would not eat. I will not eat of the king's meat because there were things that the law commanded that he should not eat and he said, I will not eat of the king's meat. I will not defile myself by eating of the king's meat. Daniel, Daniel's character was unswerving because he had purposed in his heart. And folks, when we can, we, these convictions need to be made early in our life. These, these, that's why your kids need to be in Sunday school early. So these convictions can be planted in their heart young. These convictions can, it's something that they can develop as children. And they, they can carry these convictions through their life. And these convictions will keep them. Keep their character and develop them. I, I, I've seen some people, kind of like the guy that shows up at the gym. He walks into the gym, and man, you can tell he's there. This boy is going to be, be sweating to the oldies or whatever. He has come in. He's got the headband on. He, he, he's got the, the jersey on. He's got the, got the workout pants on. He's got the new Hoka tennis shoes on. He is there to work out, and he's serious about it. And he comes in, and he walks over, goes straight, to, straight over, and picks up, picks up one of the, the, what do you call them? Dumbbells? Barbells? He takes it weights? Okay, that's better for me. He takes, picks up one of the weights, and he curls it, and he lets it go. Just one, and he starts, and okay, that's enough. He's dressed for it. He understands what he's there to do, but there is no effort on his part to develop his character. And Daniel's character was, I don't care what it takes. And your character is going to be tested. You're going to be tested. See if your morals are going to stand up to the test. See if your, if your, uh, your words are going to stand up to the test. If, you, if your decisions are going to stand up to the test. Your character will be tested. And your character may take you to a lion's den. Because Daniel said, I don't care what you say, I'm not, I'm not stopping to pray. I'm not going to stop praying. I remember the testimony. This, this man was a preacher. He wasn't always a preacher. As a matter of fact, he had been in prison. And right before he went to prison, he got the Holy Ghost. He went to church. God filled him with the Holy Ghost. And he, he, he testified this at, at our general conference years ago. And... He, he walked into prison, and he'd had this experience with God just week, two weeks, something like that before he had to end up in, in prison. Went into prison, and at that evening, first night in prison, he got down on his knees beside his bunk. Guy was, guy, one guy was up in, up in the other bunk, and he got down on his knees and started praying. And he started praying in the Holy Ghost, praying in the prison cell talking in tongues. Now, he had made some decisions. He had made some decisions before God, and, and he had to go to prison. That didn't mean he lost the Holy Ghost. He got down on his knees beside, beside the bunk, and he started praying in the Holy Ghost. And that guy on the top bunk, he just kind of looked down and watched him. And the next day, there was somebody out in the yard, and they were talking about the guy that was making all the noise the night before, saying all these words. And one of the guys came up to him, and he said, you better leave that better leave that man alone. He said, my, my grandma prayed like that. And when my grandma prayed like that, things happened. You better not touch that boy. But he decided when he got, when he got the Holy Ghost, even, he, even though he had to go to prison, he, he had the strength of character to say, I am not going to lose my, uh, my experience with God just because I've got to spend some time in prison. Got out of prison, went straight from prison to Bible college. Went through Bible college. He's pastoring a church right now. Pastoring a church. Because he has the strength of character. 
Don't tell me he wasn't surrounded by all kinds of stuff uh, all around him all day long. He was. But he had the strength of character to develop that character and say, no matter what, no matter what, I'm not going to bend, I'm not going to bow, I'm not going to burn. No matter what. We could go on. Just stand. i got to quit. I'm over time. You've got to guard your character. Godly character matters. It matters. There's some people, they'll do anything to blend in with whoever they're with. You know what? I've stood out. Since I've had the Holy Ghost, I've stood out. I'll keep standing out. I'll be different. I walk in over at the bus bay, conversations change. Everything changes. People, people stop talking about whatever they're talking about. Out of respect. Out of respect for me. Because character matters. God, we pray today. Lord, I want my character to be pleasing to you. I want my life to be pleasing to you, oh God. It doesn't matter what anybody else says. It doesn't matter, God, how, how, how what anybody else does. I want my character, Lord God, to be godly character. Lord, to be a holy in character. God, I pray today, let my, my character reflect you. Let it be a reflection of your mercy and your grace. Let it be a reflection of your love. Let it be a reflection of the power of the Holy Ghost. Lord, I pray today, oh God, we guard our character. Lord, whatever weaknesses we have in our lives, that God, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, God, you give us the strength through the power of the Holy Ghost. God, to guard that weakness. Lord, to understand and recognize the weakness.